welcome, 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 City Church. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. God bless you. You may be seated. I am so honored to have you worshiping the Lord with us today. Um, for those of you who do not know me, all of our first-time guests and those who have been here a second and a third time, um, my name is Summer, and my husband David and I are the senior pastors. And it is so good to have you here again. And I would love to meet you and feel my moving this, help me move this a little bit closer. Thank you. Awesomeness. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say, you know, those of you who are new, we are excited to have you. One of the things that we love about City is just our differences here. And so there's different ethnicities, different nationalities, different church backgrounds, no, no church backgrounds, um, different political views. But one thing that we have in common, his name is Jesus. And it's so good. He is so good that he made us with all these different differences. And he unites us together. And so I want you to know, all of you first-timers and newcomers, that I would love to meet you. And you have a place here. Amen. Uh, my husband, David, he and Pastor Kim, my father-in-law, are in Indonesia. Um, they are preaching there. He was able to, Pastor David was able to preach to about 200 women on Friday night. And then um, three services. So they're 11 hours ahead. So we already had the three services. Um, we're talking about an 8,000 member church. And so it's just so cool that he gets this opportunity. I mean, he would be excited to preach to an eight member church. But the fact that God has given this platform, that he, can, that he has all this influence. And so it's just really cool to connect with them. I believe on Monday, he is going to be speaking to about 200 people in their leadership team. So keep them in prayer. Um, but with that being said, I get to give you the word today. So I'm excited to be here with you. And so our message this month, our monthly series is um, I'm about to forget my monthly series. I'm about to tell you our message. Um, it's actually paper mache hearts. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, for the great dream team that we have here and the city kids, everybody, ushers, everybody just working together. The praise team ushering us in with praise and worship. Pastor Tony um, having an excellent message on tithing. Lord, I just thank you for this message. And God, I just ask for your anointing on this message, even though I want it to be clear and concise and I want able, everyone to get it. But God, we need your presence because your presence is what will move us and what will transform us and what will help us be more like you. And so we just ask for that and we thank you that we have that. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. So the title of my message is Hidden Tears. And um, I want to just put a background with paper mache hearts. So paper mache hearts, you know, we have different layers in our hearts. So different emotions going on, whether that's disappointment, um, anger, um, depression, fear, anxiety. There's all different kinds of stuff. But the point of the paper mache hearts is that we are able to connect with God and really able to give that over to him. And so, like I said, my message is hidden tears. And... Um, you know, we have four children. Uh, David is 10, AJ, Adrian, he is nine, Zayden is seven, and then we needed a little break. And so then we had Kendallin, and she is three years old. And I have conditioned myself when they start crying. So, you know, when you, you're working or you're, you're at school or whatever you do, and you get home and you got to clean, cook, um, do laundry, you know, even stay at home moms, you got to do all that stuff. Bless your heart. I love you. Um, but you got to do all this different stuff. And you probably even have to do help with homework and all this stuff. But then when you get your me time, it feels so good. And for me, my me time is world of dance. I got to hear, you know, what Jennifer Lopez has to say about that dance because girlfriend did those pirouettes like that. And then this ballroom dance couple over here did this. And I'm like, I have to hear what Neo has to say about this thing. And so when I'm right in that moment, and I'm like, oh, this is about to be good. And then you just hear this crying. And AJ this past week was just, had a horrible fight with one, of, well, actually with both of his brothers. And just is so upset and just so startled. And, you know, I've conditioned myself to say, okay, let's talk about this. Like, what's going on with you? Let's talk, let's talk this through. And then if I figure out, like, when they're like, <gasps> I don't you know, doing all that stuff, and they can't talk. So then I train myself, and I'm like, okay, 
why don't you go and have you some you time? You go to your room, have you, you see how I did that? See, I'm escaping them from me so I can watch Jennifer Lopez. He's like, go ahead and you have you some you time. You get yourself together and, you know, really contemplate, maybe pray about it, you know. Ask the Lord what's going on in your heart and then you can come back and talk to me. Like I really do say that. I'm like, boy, if you don't get yourself in your room, go get it together, go cry, and then you come back and let's talk about it. Because right now, I can't do life with you. You know what I'm saying? And so, y'all feel me, you feel me, yeah. And, but, but the whole point of that is I want our kids to have permission to cry. Like, it's okay for you to cry. I want, I want my, my spouse's children to be like, my husband is not afraid to cry. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not afraid to have emotions and reveal that emotion. So I'm trying to teach them that, and you can use that little tip if you want to. You know, go have you some you time, boo. But anyway, and so I believe with hidden tears, you know, we can hide our tears from our friends and from our family. We can hide our tears um, even from God, and we can have hidden tears that we don't even know about. Tears that, like, you know, friends and family can touch on, and you're like, the, the tears, the floodgates of tears just start coming. And you're like, where in the world did this come from? Um, but I, wanna, I really want to concentrate on the hidden tears that we hide from God. Because I think it's one thing where you have tears that you don't even know about, but then there's tears that you do know about and you're not even giving that over to God. And that can be a that could be pretty dangerous. So I just want to concentrate on that. I'm going to be speaking from Psalms 40, verses one, um, chapter 40, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And this passage I love because I believe it's a promise of what happens when we reveal our tears to God and what he does with our tears. And so um, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. So something that you got to know about me is um, I was in show choir back in the day. And so I really love props, as you can see. Um, and so this cross is going to represent Jesus. It's going to represent God. And the paper mache here, heart, is going to represent our soul, which is our, consists of our mind, our will, and our emotions. And then I have this mirror here that is going to represent our experiences, our reality, okay? Just to give you the background history on that. So what I want to do is I want to walk us through with David. David did this psalm, and I want to walk us through where he was in the when he was in the in the in the pit, and then he waited patiently onto God, and then God gave him a new song. So my first point, if you're writing, taking notes on the back of your worship guide, my first point is in the pit, and I'm going to try to be slow because I got a lot of verses coming for you, so be ready. But um, Psalm 40, verse two, I'm just going to read it one more time. It says he also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. And established my steps. I want you to think about, and I pray that the Holy Spirit starts nudging you a little bit, but think about what is your pit? What is what what pit are you in? Now, some of us are probably in the pit. Some of us probably just got out of the pit. And you best believe you're probably about to go through, go back into a pit. Um, but what is your pit? Is your pit um, possibly a relationship situation, maybe it's family, maybe it's a parent to a child, um, a child to a parent, really want that connection, but you don't have it, maybe that's your pit, maybe your pit is your job, like you're waiting for a promotion, you're starting a business, um, you don't have a job, um, maybe your pit is your marriage and you're down and out and you don't know what to do, um, maybe your pit is your kids, actually your pit is probably in the city kids right now, you're like, thank God, I have a break, um, but that could be true, but you know, like seriously, I mean, like where is your pit, maybe your pit is your roommate, maybe your pit is dealing with loss, um, dealing with a loved one that has been gone. Um, maybe your pit could be um, sickness, um, dealing with an illness, and you're like, why isn't this coming off of me? Um, and whatever it may be, it's hopelessness, doubt, fear, um, anything of that, making a decision. A pit could also be success. 
It's probably freaking you out, you know. What is your pit? What I want you to understand about this word pit is it's a well, it's a cistern. When I looked it up, it's a prison. And it also means it's a place where you lay the dead. So in other words, the enemy wants you to die in your pit. He wants you to die in your depression. He wants you to die in your failure. He wants you to die in your marriage. He wants you to die in your sickness. He wants you to die in your doubting. He wants you to die. Why? Because in John 10, the, enemy, the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. What is your pit? Now, it also says that there was miry clay. So if the enemy is not able to kill you in that pit, then he wants the miry clay, if you think about it, it's sticky. It's damp dirt. So he'll probably, what he wants to do is he wants to stick it on you. So, oh, I'm not going to kill you. I can't kill you in it. But now he, want, he wants it to be stuck stuck to you. I have here written on here is fear. I don't know if you can read that or not. But it doesn't even matter. But, you know, maybe it's disappointment. Again, maybe it's loss. But he wants, he wants you to hold that tight to you. What happens when we, this is what happens when we keep our tears hidden from God, is we begin to, looking at our experience, looking at our reality, we begin to feed ourselves off of that pit. You begin to feed your fear. You begin to feed your disappointment. I'll give you an example. Like for, um, there was one time before I was working at the church, I had a supervisor that told me, hey, I'm going to get you to be able to work at home. And then something happened. That supervisor that changed change situations, and the other supervisor was like, actually, no, you're not going to be working at home. I, I, I could seriously feed, like, why did he do that? Like, why? I would feed myself and say, why didn't he give me that opportunity? This company is this and this and this and this. You know, it's like you're feeding, you're feeding off of it instead of, God, I know that you're still in control. I know whatever happened, happened, but whatever door that you close, I know that you'll open another door. But instead, but sometimes that we get to, sometimes we, we, we feed off of it. Romans um, 8, 5 through 6, if you're taking notes, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on things of the Spirit. But get this one. The verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded, earthly minded, looking at my situation, looking at my experience, looking at my reality, leads to death. But to be spiritually minded leads to life and peace. So as you reveal your tears to God, he wants to bring us up out of this horrible pit. Amen. Point number two, wait patiently waiting. Patiently waiting. Psalm 40 verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. This is so good. As David was crying, as he was crying unto God, Actually, that word patiently also means another word of waiting. He was, he was waiting in his waiting. Patience is not doing nothing. Patience is progressing towards God. If you take down notes, Habakkuk 2.1 says, I will position myself on the fortress. Oh, this is so good. I will keep watch to see what the Lord says to me and how he will respond to my complaint. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Not that your mind is stayed on, oh, my bank account is not right. Oh, how am I going to get this job? How am I going to get this promotion? Oh, how, how am I going to deal with this fear? How am I going to deal with this loss? No, no, no. Your mind, when your mind is stayed on Christ, when your mind is stayed on God, that's what will give you perfect peace. Not this will give you perfect peace. James 1, um, 23 through 26, it says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word, it's like looking into the mirror, and I'm paraphrasing, if you will. But it's like looking into the mirror and basically trying to fix everything about you and then walk away from it. 
and forget what you even try to do because you're not God. You can't tra transform yourself. But in James it says, no, when you look into a doer of the word is when you look into the law of liberty and he is the one who will transform you. He is the one who will show you what to do. This is my how-to in this situation, and I hope you grasp this in the how-to. In my patiently waiting. So this was in the end of July, and um, I was at home. My husband was gone, and I just started freaking out. Now, what I'm realizing, I was really having an anxiety attack. But I started freaking out. I love the word freaking out better. But anyway, um, I, I, I started freaking out. And obviously, you know, my kids, they don't have a clue of what's going on. But I'm like, what, is, what in the world? And so I call my husband. This is my husband's ringtone. Because, well, first let me get, let me, let me, before I go to that, what I want you to understand is, like, I tried to do it within myself. In my freak out, in my anxiety attack, I was like, okay, let me just try to pray this through. That didn't work. Um, let me try to worship. That didn't work. I turned on some music, and I was like, okay, let me worship through music. That didn't work. Um, I was like, and you best believe I was not about to pick up a Bible because I'm like, that is not going to work for me right now. Like, I was freaking, I mean, literally freaking out. And so I had to call, I had to call my husband, but just check this ringtone out for me. My jam, okay? Charlie, you better say that. That's my ringtone to my man. Was he one call away? No, he was not. I was ticked. Your wife is in a pit. You know what I'm saying? I was dying in a pit, one call away. Now, if I was really tripping, I would change that ringtone, but he's still one call away. He's still my man. I, hear, I see you, boo. You see me in Indonesia, I see you. But I was, I was like, I was in torment. Like my mind was freaking out. So what did I do? Now I want you to get this in James, if you get this scripture. Um, James uh, 5.14, it says, if anyone is sick among you, call upon the elders. I had to call upon the elders. I had to call someone who was seasoned. I'm not gonna do this by myself. There was no way that I could just hang along and be in my own island and, 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 and die in torment. No, the enemy wants to put you by yourself so that you can die. I encourage you right now by your pastor in the name of the Holy Ghost that you call on your elders, someone who is seasoned so that you can get out of that pit and they will pick you up out of that pit. Now you best believe what I want you to get, though, is I called, I called my bae. Get this, he wasn't there. Did that stop me? No. <laughs> I'm waiting patiently upon the Lord. This is me waiting in my waiting. Was I going to sit there and soak? Oh, woe is me. This is da 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 da. No. My emotional man was attached to this reality. My, I mean, I was feeling it in my mind, my will and my emotions, but my spirit man was clinging to the Lord because I needed help. So you best believe I had to call somebody else. And if they didn't pick up the phone, I was gonna call my mama. And if my mama didn't pick up the phone, I was gonna call my godmother. And if she didn't pick up, I had a list, honey. I got a list of people. Get you a list. I was gonna call somebody. But the second, the second, okay, so Pastor Kim, I call Pastor Renee. They are so cute. So what they love to do, this is seasoned couple thing. I don't know if us young couples do this. Look, I'm talking about young couples. Anyway, um, seasoned, like, like they, they, they like to take drives and just do nothing, you know. They're not going. I'm like, 
go from point A to point B, you know, like just get there. No, they want to take drives and look at the scenery and just talk and, oh, it's just so great. Well, here's me picking up the phone. I need help. I just interrupted their romance. But I didn't care because I needed help. The enemy wants to put you by yourself and intimidate you. Oh, they're too busy. Oh, they they're, they have something else to do. No, 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 no. Break free from that because you are dying in your pit. So, look, break every chain. Just break it. Just break it. Um, and so I call them. And again, I don't know, like, I wish I could have cried. Like, I wanted to cry just to release, but I couldn't. And so I called them, and, you know, she had me on speakerphone, and Pastor Kim's like, okay, what's going on? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Da, 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 da. And I'm like saying all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, maybe it's work, and work is church. So we're not walking around talking, you know, the angels are feeding us bread all the time, and we're singing upon angels, and we're in the Holy Ghost. No, we're not in heaven all the time, okay? There's stress here too. There's a price that you pay, pay, I mean pay when you get to be in the church. But anyway, um, so I'm, 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 I'm down. So I'm talking about that. And I'm like, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And then when I get to the bottom of it, I start getting so embarrassed because I'm like, oh, my God, am I seriously dealing with this again and I was so intimidated to tell them what it was. And this is what the enemy tries to do. He intimidates you. He does not want you to say it. So when I finally said it, it was like, this is so stupid. You think about it. When you speak a lie, there's no weight to it. It just falls to the dust. It's like, this is so dumb. This ain't even real. So my, my fear was, it was, I'm going to die prematurely. I was like, oh, my gosh. I think my fears. I'm gonna die now. If you know anything about me, the one of the reasons I feel like the enemy tries to attack me with this is because my father died prematurely. He died at the age of 30, and so every now and then I could find myself. It's like a cycle. I could find where this happens, and like around a funeral or if someone close to me passes away, or I find out about it, or whatever. It's a cycle, and I should have been on guard on that, but I wasn't. But anyway, so I tell him, and he's like. He was like, you're going to die? I was like, yeah, yeah, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. He said, okay, so what you going to die of? <laughs> pastor Kim, that's my pastor. What you going to die of? I was like, uh, oh, I'm going to get a disease today. Yeah, um, <laughs> cancer right away. It's just going to happen just like that. Oh, do you have life insurance? <laughs> really? <laughs> but what he was doing, he was making light of the situation, but he was showing me how stupid it was. It was so ridiculous. It's like, what else are you going to die of? I just started listing off stuff like an intruder's going to come and, you know, hack us off or something like that. I don't know, you know. And it just came, it was just so ridiculous. It was like, this is so dumb. But it was so good to share that because I'm like, this is not even real. And what he began to do, we began to bind. <laughs> Whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose here on earth will be loose in heaven. We begin to bind and loose. I begin to call that thing out, and I begin to speak life. I begin to praise God and praise him in my heavenly language. I begin to shout, and I begin to give him a new, he gave me a new song, all in that. It was so, so wonderful. Let me get to point three, because I already said it, which is a new song. So Psalm 40, verse 3. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. He gives you a new song. And what I love about that with the mouth thing is that he actually gives you, it's like for me, I was so down and out. I was so like clinging to this thing because, and I wasn't facing it because again, I was in my waiting patiently, but I was clinging to it, but I was looking to the Lord, but I was clinging to it because emotionally, I was feeling it. You know, fearfully, I was just, I was so fearful. I was feeling that bad boy. And you couldn't tell me any different. But the thing about it was this is reality and this is your experience, right? But yeah, this is a fact. But this is the truth. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. This is temporal. This is eternal. 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to focus on this. This is going to pass away. Are you kidding me? I'm going to focus on God and who he is. And he started putting a new song in my, in my mouth. And when he started giving me breath to breath, I began to speak what he speaks. Oh, let me give you this scripture. So good. Okay. It's 2 Corinthians 10.8. This is the message version. It says, what you say about yourself means nothing in God's work. It's what God says about you that makes the difference. So when I started speaking God's word and the scripture that I got from that fearful thought of dying prematurely was, you shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. As I begin to speak that, and I prayed that, let me tell you this real quick. I prayed that over my kids because we pray with our kids every night. And I was like, repeat after me. I said, you say, I shall not die. They're like, what? <laughs> say it. I, they're like, I shall not die. I shall live. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I mean, I was in that bad boy, but you know why? Because I was hiding behind the blood of Jesus, and I began to speak his name, and I began to call those things that are not as though they were, and it wasn't me that was speaking it, but it was my king that was speaking it, and he was speaking through me. Oh, you best believe I was down and out. What you got to say now? I got faith. You know what I'm saying? I had peace in my joy. I was filled up with the Holy Ghost. You hear me? Because of my God who I serve. Not this. Get out of here. This is my God. I want to encourage you to speak his word. Because he's giving you a new song. Amen. In my closing today, what are your next steps? I know some of us are going through some tough stuff in your pit. But what are your next steps? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to wait patiently for him? Waiting patiently is not sitting like I told you, I was calling people. I was getting help. They were praying for me. They were giving me words to say. Maybe your next step is I'm going to ask Jesus into my heart. Maybe a next step is I'm going to talk to someone who I trust. Small groups are a great opportunity for that. Maybe you need to hear other people's testimonies. Maybe you need to hear people who are seasoned and hear how they walk through this faith. Maybe you need to get scriptures that pertain to your situation. And maybe you need to take your moments with God and worship him. You know, some of us, my husband, I told our um, ladies group, I said, my husband, he gets up every morning. It's like on the dot. You see me rolling my eyes because I'm so jealous. But he gets up every morning and he has his Bible and he has his journal and he's hearing the phone, the thoughts from the throne. Where when I get up, mommy, what's for breakfast? Mommy, where's my homework? Mommy, I don't have nothing to wear. But what I've learned, Pastor Nate has taught me, is take your moments in God. You know, whether that's you driving in the car, whether that's you taking a shower, whatever it may be, take your moments. So maybe your next step is, I'm gonna be intentional about taking my moments in Him. Or maybe your next step is, if I get a negative thought, I'm gonna get that scripture, I'm gonna cancel that thought. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. What's so awesome about God is he knows that we have pits and he knows that we're going to have things that are going to stick to us. And that's why I truly believe why he came to this earth so that he can deliver us out of that mighty pit. Amen. Um, if you don't mind just bowing your head for me and closing your eyes, I want this moment to be really sacred just between you and God. And if you don't mind, for those of you who want a relationship with God, you want him to be your father. I want you to raise your hand. Praise God. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
those of you who want to recommit, maybe you turned away from God and you're like, no, I need to come back to my first love. I want you to raise your hand too. Praise God. Thank you. One, yes, two, three, four. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then for those of us who are in a pit, for those of us who have hidden tears and you want God, you want to reveal those tears more to God, I want you to raise your hand. I'm raising my hand because I want to reveal more and more and more to him because he's going to give us a new song. Amen. Go ahead and put your hands down and let's pray with me. Just to repeat after me and say, Jesus, I repent of every sin. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I reveal my tears to you. Deliver me, God, out of this horrible pit. And I will wait patiently for you to give me that new song where others will see it and proclaim you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe God heard that prayer, go ahead and give him a hand clap because he did, because he did.